In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to add activities to Seesaw. So I'm under the activities area here. I could also come up here and do the assign activity. It's going to take me to this browse activity library. There are three different sections under the activity library. The first is community, then school, then my library. Community is a great place to start when you are first trying to uh, figure out how to use Seesaw. It has uh, some pre-made lessons that you can go through, um, some from Seesaw itself. So like they have five getting started at Seesaw activities for first grade. You can change the grade level. You can change the subject of what you're doing. Uh, they also have 29 remote learning activities. And then they have 127 activities for K through five. So you can go down and you can see just some of the different activities that are available. Um, I can go up here and if I'm doing something like digital citizenship, I can go in here and see all the stuff that they have available for the specific grade level that I'm working under. I could go and I could do history. Or if I wanna see those home learning activities, I can click on that. So if I like one of these, I can go ahead and I can open it up and it's going to show me the resources that it's going to give me. So I can go through. It looks like it does have a little template that will play. Um, it shows the directions here. It will play the instructions. So the teacher has recorded the instructions for the student. If I heart this, then it will save to my library or I can just immediately assign it to my students. So what it'll do is I'll heart it, the students respond using the Seesaw tools, and then you approve the student responses. So pretty simple. This is for kindergarten and first, second grade. It's compatible with Chromebooks, computers, iPads, iPhones, Android tablets, Android phones, and Kindle Fires. So a lot of the activities that are found under the community is for everywhere. So it's a great place to get started. As you and your group starts working on some assignments for your grade level, you can always add them to your school. Um, this is just a great way to share resources, especially as we're all trying to figure out how to use this product. It's really nice so only one teacher has to create the assignment and then all the other teachers can get on there and use that same exact one. So you can sort of split up work for, um, for each other if you're in a specific group just for first grade. Um, and then under my library is where all of your saved activities are going to be found, as well as where you can create your own activities. So you can organize them by grade level, by subject. So as you're gradually working through these, you can start doing them in here. You can also, if you have activities that you've done um, through a collection, those will be found down here. So I did save one of these. Um, pre-made activities from the community. It's just a learn, learning how to use Seesaw. So you can see I have it all ready to go. They have a little template that the students will be using. If I need to edit this, I just click on these three dots. I can add it to a collection. I can copy and edit. So if I wanna copy it to my own, sort of separate from the one that was found in the community, I can edit that activity, delete it, or I can share it. So I'll just click on edit so you can see what it looks like. So there's the name, the student instructions. This is where I can add the voice instructions, uh, especially with kindergarten, first grade, even second grade. Since our students are still learning you know, how to read, those voice instructions are gonna be really helpful. Um, if you have a lot of EL students, it would be nice to add those instructions in English and Spanish. They'll have a little template. This is something that they get to draw on. You can also add examples drawings, any of that kind of stuff to here as well, just so that you have something to reference. Under the more options, you can have some teacher notes so that just sort of lets you know uh, what you're working on here. And then you can also add a skill. So if you have edited, uh, created a skill, you can have it on there where based off the student's score, that sort of helps me track on how well they're doing when it comes to my skill, which I have as digital citizenship. So once I'm all done, I'll click save. And then once I'm ready to go, I'll click this assign button and I'm going to assign it to my students and I'm gonna assign it to just one class. If you have multiple students, 
or multiple classes, you can have them all down here and assign them. You can also schedule this out. So if you're working on assignments uh, for future, you can actually get them ready to go and schedule them and they'll appear on the student's uh, own Seesaw page when you're ready to go. So you can do that um, here as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assign it to class. So students will sign in and then they'll respond. Um, so we'll come back to that uh, in a second. So, so if you are wanting to create an activity yourself, you'll have to click on this create new activity and this will pop up and you can start adding stuff. So I'm getting all my information from digital citizenship, uh, from common sense media. It's a lesson for first grade. So I'm just taking a lot of the information and putting it in here. So I'll just do pause. And... So I'm gonna type in my instructions, students. So I'll, I can add my instructions here. I can record myself reading out these instructions. I can also add multimedia. So I'm going to put the videos in. The nice thing with this is that uh, the common sense videos are both in English and in Spanish. So I can copy them both in. So I'm linking that. There it is. I can, if you're adding any activity, you can record what that video is. You can also caption it if you need it. So I'm just gonna upload that. There it is. And then I need to add my template. So for the activity, I'm going to upload that from my computer. You can also select it from your drive if you wish. Two. So there's the activity. So students will have the ability to go in and they will have text, they'll have uh, audio, they can take a picture, they have all kinds of drawing features. Um, they can edit it, make it different colors, they can add a page, all kinds of different stuff on here. So I'll allow that. This is just making a copy so they'll write over it, um, which is really nice so it's not going to ruin your master copy at all. So that's gonna upload right down there. I want to open that up and I want to add a skill. We're doing digital citizenship, so I want to put that in there. I can add information in here if I wish. And then once I'm ready to go, I'll click save. And now that is ready to go. It's ready to add in there. You can see that uh, pause and think online. And now I can go ahead and assign it. So I'm going to assign that to my class. And I can then go view it in my activity side. So when students come in, these are the two activities that they'll see. I can go here and I'll look at the perspective of my student. So they have the learning how to use Seesaw activity here and the pause and think online activity here as well. Um, students can add their responses you can select it see what they do um, it shows all the all the stuff they need 
you can go in here and you can do a get activity leak. You can go in and edit from here or you can delete it if you so wish.